Classification is a powerful tool. It allows us to predict outcomes based on attributes. For example, a bank gives loan to 10 clients. It collects some data about those clients, including whether the client is a homeowner, the client's marital status, and the client's income level. It also knows whether the client default on the loan or not. The bank likes to find the relationship between the attributes such as home ownership, marital status, income, and, w and whether a client defaults. The bank also asks following questions. Which attribute affects a client default change the most? Can we rank the attributes by importance? How do we answer those questions? Maybe we can build a tree like this to predict whether a client would default or not based on their attributes. For example, this tree classifies the clients first based on homeownership and then, depending on homeownership, further classifies clients by marital status or income. Based on this tree, if a client is a homeowner and single, then it predicts that this client will default. Apparently, the accuracy of this prediction depends on how good the classifications are. So the key is to classify the attributes well. But what does it mean by having a good classification? So what is a good classification? For example, is homeownership a better classification than income? Let's first classify the data by homeownership. Here, each dot represents a client. Blue dots are the clients that do not default. Red dots are those who default. There are two outcomes for this classification. A client is either a homeowner or not a homeowner. We call the possible outcomes from a classification splits. For example, there are two splits when we classify clients by homeownership. There are five homeowners and five non-homeowners. Among the five homeowners, only one defaults while two of the non-homeowners default. Now, let's classify the data by income. There are also two splits, low income and high income. There are again five low income clients and five high income clients. Three of the low income clients default while none of the high income clients default. It appears that income is a better classification because none of the client default in the high income case. We say that the high income split is pure because every client in that group has the same outcome. On the other hand, low income in both splits of home ownership do not have a pure result because the clients do not show the same outcome. A pure split is always preferred because it means that the split is meaningful. For example, classifying clients by income at least tells you that high income clients do not default. But categorizing clients by home ownership does not really tell much about whether a client would default or not. Here, whether a client is a homeowner or not, the clients have similar chance to default. So this gives you a visual sense of what is a good classification. But we can't always visually do that. We need a quantified way to measure how good a classification is. That leads to the next slide. To measure how good a classification is, first, let's measure how good a split of a classification is. This is done by something called entropy. The entropy of a split S has this formula. Here, S represents a split. For example, if we classify clients by income, then low income and high income are the two splits. Second, the lowercase c is the number of classes, or possible outcomes, of a split. In our example, default or not default are the two possible outcomes, so c equals to 2. Third, P of I given S means the fraction of record before loaning to class I in split S. 
Don't worry if you are confused. Once you see an example later, it will become pretty clear. Entropy will give you a number between 0 and 1. 0 means that the data is pure. In other words, all of the records in this split have the same outcome. Either all of them default or all of them do not default. Entropy of 1 means that the record in this split is extremely impure. Each classification has multiple splits. For example, classifying by income has two splits, low income and high income. We can then measure the impurity of the classification using this formula. Here, capital S is the number of possible splits of a classification. It will be 2 for income, for example. NS is the number of records in the split S. For example, NS is 5 for the split of low income. Capital N is the total number of records in the data we try to classify. Impurity is also a number between 0 and 1. 0 means that the classification is pure which we like to see. One means that this classification is extremely impure. In other words, this classification does not tell you anything at all about whether a client defaults or not. So, if we like to know which classification is better, we simply measure their impurity, and then we will favor the one with a lower impurity. For example, Suppose home ownership has a higher impurity than income. Then home ownership is a worse classification than income. Now, let me give you an example on calculating the impurity of a classification. For example, let's classify all of the records by home ownership. Here's a graphical visualization of this classification. Here. Capital N equals to 2 means that we have 10 records to classify. C equals to 2 means that each record has two possible outcomes, either default or not default. For each split, lowercase n equals to 5 means that there are 5 records in each split. Then the entropy when clients are homeowners is calculated in this way. There are two possible outcomes, default or not default. So the entropy is the sum of two items. The first item captures the outcome when clients default. In the first item, 1 over 5 is the fraction of defaulted clients in the first split. The second item captures the outcome when clients do not default. In the second item, 4 over 5 is the fraction of clients that do not default. The entropy when clients are not homeowners is calculated in a similar way. The entropy is again sum of two items. The first is when clients default and the second is when clients do not default. Finally, the impurity of this classification is the sum of the fraction of each split in all of the records you try to classify times their corresponding entropy. For example, here 5 over 10 is a fraction of records that are homeowners. It, it is multiplied by 0 0.7219 which is the entropy for homeowner. In the second term, 5 over 10 is a fraction of non-homeowners. It is multiplied by the entropy of non-homeowners, which is 0 0.97110. This eventually turned out to be 0 0.8464, which is the impurity for home ownership. I just show you how to calculate impurity when you classify all of the records by home ownership. Now, I'd like you to take a pause to understand what's going on and then calculate the impurity when the entire record is classified by marital status and income. You can find the answer in the next two slides.